Am I supposed to go? All right. <laughs> Kia ora and welcome to the show. Thanks for so much for downloading our 12th podcast. I'm Raj, my background's in film and television and media and tech. And I'm Mike Riversell, working with dev teams, Kiwis moving to the cloud, growing companies and making ripples in the Miramar community. And you're here because you're a Kiwi that either works in or has a great passion for tech or media in New Zealand. We've got another great show for you, and later we'll talk to Owen Williams. He's the marketing and comms manager, front-end developer at Hoist Apps, and he's the weekend editor at The Next Web as well. Right, episode 12. Let's get into it. It's rock and roll now that I've got that little piece of stone out of that audio jack. (laughs) Microsoft NZ pledges $1 million tech youth investment. Microsoft New Zealand is donating $1 million in cash, software and service investment to High Tech Youth Network. This is designed to provide pathways for the young, unserved Kiwis in the IT industry. There is currently six high-tech youth studios located in West Auckland, Manukau, Hamilton, Tauranga, Moera, which is in Northland, and Whakatane. Sites in Dunedin, Fiji, and Hawaii are also in development. Wow. I wouldn't mind doing a Hawaii stint. Well, no, you wouldn't want to go to Hawaii at the moment. Well, not right now. Earthquake and two hurricanes. Oh, right, <laughs> not yeah. the best thing. It's a bit busy at the moment. Yes. The studio actually targets people from 8 to 25 years. That um, are in the community, that to pr- and they also provide um, NCA industry related secondary and tertiary credentials. They also supply workplace internships and mentoring of young people in high tech and digital media industries. Very cool. Mm. The High Tech Youth Network has four core objectives. There they are to empower young people and communities to become capable, creative, and confident lifelong learners. Mm-hmm to foster the growth and learning community through sharing of ideas and support, to encourage young people and to encourage young people the development of a high po- positive identity and a belief in their potential through linking cultural knowledge and values with technology, to champion, support, manage, research and implement services and projects that will f- further the development of the above objectives mm-hmm. within New Zealand and the Pacific. Find out more on hightechyouth.org. It's a very cool thing. I've got to say that... Their objectives and how they describe themselves is a bit wordy, isn't it, Raj? It is a little bit wordy. Yeah. I, I had troubles. You did. As just you may run, have noticed. Run up that one a few times. <laughs> Take 14. But it's cool what they want to do. It's just probably want to use smaller words. A less Microsoft business wank, I'd They may need a marketing comms person. That's what they need. Righty ho. Where do the women work in IT? According to the fabulous Wiki New Zealand site, there are two thirds more female DBAs than male. And then we have more women as web admins and software testers. testers. <laughs> but then the next 25 categories are all male-dominated. Fantastic. This is not a surprise for anybody, I can imagine. The highest male-to-female ratio is software and app developers. With, I have to say, I'm not sure this can be correct, 100% being uh, male. Wow. Now, I actually know a software and app developer who's a female, so that can't be correct. But anyway, mm. it's pretty damn high. I mm. suppose the question from that is, that's great information from wikinewzealand.org. Uh, why? What is it about computing that makes it male-dominated? It can't be due to body strength. <laughs> so what is it? Don't have to answer that question. I was just trying to think of an answer, <laughs> but, you know, I think maybe the, the, the guys out there can answer that. Send us your feedback on Twitter, of course. Yeah. And uh, hashtag granted at, uh, access granted at hashtag me.co.nz. Do you have the right CMS? CMS, right? Content Management Systems. Bane of everyone who has run a corporate website. Well, Richard Hulse, the powerhouse behind Radio New Zealand's extremely useful site, never miss a thing they broadcast as their website has everything for you to stream and or download. Anyway, Richard has, as you can imagine, had work with a number of CMSs in his life. CMSs or CMSI? CMSI? CMSI, yeah, I don't, I don't know. know. Yes. In, the, um, in this article, he lists some questions to ask. Some factors and some factors to think about the basics that need to be covered. For instance, a CMS must do the following four things. Deliver your product. Yes. So it's kind of basic. Yeah. It's got to do it. It has to be on the internet then. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, if it's a blog or if it's a website or mm. whatever it is, it needs to put your product out there. You'd yes. think that would be easy, but yeah. I've seen government websites that don't that do not deliver do their product. Yeah. Mm. Second is support business processes. Good call. They need to integrate. And then fourthly, they need to allow you to innovate. This is a great article if you work in the web or on the web. I'm looking at you, government comms teams. Then please do yourself a favour and go read it. The link is in our show notes, or just Google Richard Hulse CMS. Got through it. I got through that. Well done. I'm having one of those days. You are. Right. Are we recording? Yeah.
Paul Bouchette. I think that's how you say his name. Paul, Paul Bouchette on startups. Look, he's the man that created Gmail. Okay. The developer and the man that could see its potential, despite his boss, Marissa Meyer, telling him not to create it. Do you know oh, that? the old Yahoo lady. She's now the yeah, Yahoo lady. Yeah, that's, that's right. Um, and yeah, he created it in an evening as well. He created Gmail in just an evening. Yes, he said, no, it won't work. Um, don't do that scanning thing to find advertising. It, that's not how it should be. But he went, oh, I could do that. So in an evening, he put that in there. <laughs> Everyone saw it and went, oh, that's quite cool. Oh. And now they have a whole new product. Hmm. Anyway, it's a great talk, which he's blogged about on about startups. The link, again, is in the show notes. And I would recommend it to anyone that is starting any new venture, be it a company or a project, to take a read. For instance, he talks about the danger of experience and dogma. He says, just because it didn't work in the past doesn't mean it won't work in the future. How many times have you heard, oh, we tried that in 1976 and it won't work? <laughs> of course it won't work again in this day and age, because they already sort of tried it, right? That's right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Likewise, what worked before may not again work again. Oh, no. So the best opportunities live in our collective blind spots. To most, they appear to be bad ideas or simply unimportant. Sound familiar? Anyway, go read the whole article. It's an excellent article. Sell your data with tele... Oh, sorry. Sparks offshoot. Quorus. Curious is how it's It's a bizarre one. It's Q-R-I-O-U-S. I can see what they're trying to do. Mm. It's like Flickr. Oh, I see. It's curious. Oh, right. so drop the vowels and see yeah, what happens. That's oh, right. I see. Well, it's an interesting uh, idea. It's a, a data marketplace with data insight services and ultimately a data-focused app store. Mm. It's early days at, say it again, Mike? Curious. Curious, but we expect this to be, um, we expect this a service that Telecom, sorry, damn it, Spark, <laughs> would love to see quickly become the place for Kiwi data mashups and services. Sounds interesting. It is very interesting, yeah. I wonder how they come up with that. Oh, and they have a curious academy for you, data-centric people, to, to team up and do something else. Skill up your levels and become the insights team behind Curious. So both those links are in the show notes. Curious is Q-R-I-O-U-S.co.nz, and then there's curiousacademy.co.nz. Mm. Fascinating. Back to the gender imbalance. Now, this is an article from Wired by Izzy Lepowski. Most people might have seen us already. It's been around, floating around the institutes for the past few weeks. It's uh, wired.com slash 2014 slash 07 slash gender hyphen gap. And it talks about what the actual issue is with the gender imbalance. Wow. So look, whilst the opening story set the scene, I'm sure many of our female listeners will have experienced similar issues that is outlined. And almost all of our female interviews that we've done over the 12 weeks, have touched on the inherent sexism in the New Zealand IC industry in some way or another. So the question, of course, is what to do, what to do, what to do. Much of our constant beef about lack of dev skills, for instance, it's the same. The change starts early in our lives and it must start changing now. But mm -hmm. it's a great article. Um, every man should go and read it. And then here's some of the stories we'd love to hear your views on, because we don't have time to talk about them here right now. The links are in the show notes. How do you get to those show notes? Well, you could always... Dogpile! Which actually is just Google and Yahoo, we've discovered. And of course, Yahoo is just Microsoft's Bing, so... Fuck it, Google it. Google it. <laughs> How online voting could work. It's a great article from, from Paul Matthews, he of IITP. Go and find that one out. Internet NZ's Election 14 and the Internet. And we've got interesting. the Kiwi students rule the world at Microsoft Imagine Cup Final. Remember, we talked about these guys a few yeah. weeks ago. Well, they won. They won it. $50,000 and whatever else comes with it. That's so it's awesome. very cool. Go and read that on techday.com. To view all of these in more detail, check out the show notes. And that's the news we need to know this week. Now to events. A chance to get out of that office pod and meet your fellow Kiwis making computer do things. 2014 Big Data and Analytics Forum is happening on the 18th of August up at Rendezvous Hotel in Auckland. Very cool. Mm. Design Boot Camp. This is another Auckland one. Bring your own laptop by putting on a design, your boot, uh, design boot camp. And there's a few dates that are going on from now till January, but the first one is on the 8th of September. Excellent. Agile NZ conference that's at Tapapa in Wellington, 3rd and 4th of September. We've got Understanding IT Governance, 20th of August, so not far away. Uh, 1 p.m. to 5 at the University of Otago House, Queen Street, North. Of course, Microsoft NZ Tech Ed, the biggie is still coming, 9th to 12th of September, 2014, Auckland. We're all going to be there, plus... The hashtag team? Is, yeah. Yeah, yeah the um, hashtag radio guys will be there too. Awesome. We're all going to be there, hook up, and we'd love to talk to you. Tech Challenge Speed Jam. 
Wednesday, the 20th, 20th of August, from 1 o'clock to 2.30. Meet other great souls and jam about what you could do together. Remember to bring your business cards. Where is this, mate? This is in... Is it Wellington? Wellington. Oh, it's a Wellington. Sorry, mate. That is a Wellington one. Yeah. In fact, in any given day, you shouldn't leave home without your business cards. I always say to my teams, hand them out like candy. It's no good sitting in your pocket or your desk drawer. <laughs> now, you can RSVP them at techchallenge at wcc.gov.nz. Fantastic. And another biggie that we've been talking about for ages, Amazon's re-event. It's in Los Angeles on November the 11th or 14th, but it will be streamed. Right, let's crack into our interview this week. It's with Owen, Owen Williams, who's worked at, as an infrastructure engineer at Zero and Frond. And then he moved into marketing and communications and the front-end dev at the startup called Hoist. He also writes about technology for the next web, AppStorm, and on NBR. Fantastic, we're in. So after, how many bars have we tried to get into, guys? Five, I believe. Yeah. Five. Is this the fifth, this one? the fifth one? Yep. Fifth one, we yeah. finally found on a rainy, wet Tuesday, <laughs> Wednesday, what day is it? It's Wednesday. It's Wednesday, Wellington. No, it's not Tuesday. <laughs> it's Tuesday, we finally found a bar where we could go and sit in and be nice and quiet. And Thank you, up. Bangalore Polo Club. Yes, <laughs> with Owen. Owen Williams. Hello. This is correct. Um, Owen has very kindly said, yeah, I'll do the podcast, even though we've just discovered that he's not a podcast listener. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'll get into it it's eventually. Fine. So we were, I was just getting some context around you know, where you've been. So, Owen, tell us a little bit about yourself. What do you do now? Where can people find you? We'll do that later, actually. And tell us again. You were at Frond. I was at Frond. When was that? Uh, so I, I started there straight fresh out of uh, uni, well actually part way through uni as an intern, uh, 2010 I think, <laughs> I don't know, I struggle to remember, um, working in the support desk, I know, I know everybody does it, yeah. but, um, and after a couple of years of working in the support desk, I moved into the network ops team, it seems like one of those things that you kind of just do, you know, you're like, oh, network engineering, that sounds fun. Uh, <laughs> Not to me it doesn't, but okay. I mean, it was Is kind it? of interesting, it's like putting out other people's fires. Uh, uh, <laughs> but it turns out putting out other people's fires isn't that much fun after a while. Um, so after I did that for a little while, I joined uh, Zero as a network engineer. Can I just ask about their internship? So I know that Frond have had yep. that going for a long time, which is excellent. Mm -hmm. One of the few companies that actually have actively gone to universities and said, mm -hmm. we want to pick the cream of the crop, ah, right, which right. is an excellent thing to do. Mm. Um, what did you do at university? Uh, it was like Bachelor of IT, I think. Bachelor of Information Technology. What, what was it like going to go and work on the help desk? Uh, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> that word, yeah. interesting. I mean, I think, it's a, I think it is a good place to start. You kind of... Uh, and I think their kind of policy was that you start there because you see the front line of what's going on. Yeah. Like, you actually have to deal with people yeah. before moving up to the higher tiers where you don't actually deal with the angry person. <laughs> yes. You just get a ticket from the angry person. Yeah. So it, it was a good it was a good experience. I wouldn't do it again. Yeah. <laughs> but it's it's something I think almost every uni student should go through at some point, maybe. Yeah, yeah, no, that's a good call. Yeah. This is what it's like for those people who have to yeah, deal yeah. with the computers that you're trying I to make. can't install Office. Oh, my God. Yes. Yeah. All right, I, I, had today. I shouldn't really have a computer. I saw someone said, um, "Can you give, send me a screenshot?" This guy claimed he worked in IT a long time ago, and emailed me back saying, "Oh, what was it? The screenshot you wanted of? And how do I do a screenshot?" I said, oh, <laughs> no. Yeah, I just stared at the words for a minute, thinking, "No, he's, he's you, winding you'd me." You'd be surprised. <laughs> I would get pictures of people taking photos of their computer with a phone. <laughs> And then uploading it, and then you know they actually figured out how to upload it is, and send it to me, as opposed to taking put it into Word. That's right. what I used to get. I always put it into yeah. Word and send the Word document. Like, okay, <laughs> but that's that's the reality of computers and yeah. And that's why I used to get high res photos sent yeah. to me for print work. It was in a Word oh, document. Wow. I fling them right back at them. Oh, that's, that's not going to work, you know. Sorry. So you, you went through you went through the the. Cadetship program, Cadetship. they called it, yes. That's, yeah, that's good. And, and all power to Frond for doing that. Mm, I mean, I know uh, Interdigy do something similar as well. Yeah, it's a good starting point. I think yeah. they, uh, I think especially now they fight a lot over, a lot of the companies in Wellington at least fight over the different interns because there's not that many of mm. us, I, I suppose. Yeah. Back then, I mean, the class sizes probably weren't as big as they are now, I would say. How many in your class? Uh... Yeah. The first year or two was like less than 50 kids overall, wow. but it started getting pretty full by the end. Like, uh, 
I remember they had the newspaper for overfilling classrooms. Oh, I so. see. <laughs> <laughs> Just churning them out like Twitch yeah, yeah. people. Yeah. Well, we've talked. To, and one of the reasons we, I asked about that was we've talked a lot about the reported, and, I, and I'm experiencing it in a, in a place at the moment. The reported lack of IT skills mm. in well, we live in Wellington, but it's a, it's a New Zealand yeah. thing everywhere. Um, so it's interesting to just hear your story coming out of it and mm. yeah, I hope it changes. And then you went to the one that we always talk about, which is the one that's sucking up all the IT skills in, in <laughs> yep. this town. Hoovering them up. Yeah. Yep. Zero. So I joined Big Blue for a little while. <laughs> Big Blue. Um, oh, it's the new Big Blue. <laughs> oh, I like it. No, no. Um, <laughs> it's funny, I, I actually tried to join the company a few times, but they're so overwhelmed with applicants that it's easy to get drowned, I suppose, and and the thing, so I was like, I, I think I applied three times to the role I saw, and I was like, oh, this is shit, it's not working. <laughs> uh, so I emailed Ron. Awesome. <laughs> so on you, so yeah. don't do this. Uh, but I emailed him and I said, hey Rod, like, uh, I'm really awesome, and uh, I've had trouble with your careers department, can you, uh, you know, just refer me from the inside, I'd, I'd love to work there. Next day I got a phone call from a very irate uh, person <laughs> in the HR saying, team yeah. saying, the CEO just came <laughs> over here and told me that... Uh, <laughs> You emailed him and that you had trouble with the process, and I'm like, "Wow, well, I didn't get a reply." So, well, fair enough. Then. Hey, it and worked. then yeah, within a matter of weeks, I <laughs> was working there. So, so what's your view then? <laughs> How was that for a segue? On the New Zealand startup scene, from um, and you're in a delightful position. Yep. To be able to go as a startup mm -hmm. and also as someone who yep looks at it. It's it's a Difficult question to answer. Uh, I mean, I'll give you the answer. Right? Oh, I, <laughs> it's in the back. I'll see if I can answer it correctly. Uh, <laughs> nice. I think I think it's better than it was, and I think that is thanks to a lot of the companies like Zero and Trade Me, who essentially have have uh, generated startup people for us. You know, like they they've made a few millionaires out of them, and now yeah. those guys are going out and starting their own companies. So that they've actually school. well, yeah, it's it's yeah. but it's how it's starting. You can see mm, that these, creating the ecosystem. Yeah, they're actually giving people the money to do it themselves. Yeah, which is is really cool. I think uh, the biggest problem we have, and I've noticed around the place, and we we actually just published a post on our blog about this, is that it's really easy to think small in New Zealand, mm. like. You think about reaching a niche, but you uh, don't think about exactly how big that is. Because uh, so we we travelled to the, the US recently, and we're like, oh, we're going to do this, this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and then they're like, well, that's a bit too much. And it's because in the US, that that small amount of people is actually a crap load of people. Like mm. one percent of the market there is still a lot of market. Yeah. Mm. Um, and I think that we we often try to do either too much or too little without thinking of this global stage outside of New Zealand. So, too, um, too little I can get, I suppose, thing? Yeah, so... Or too much? No, or too much I can get. Yeah. Because that's the... I think, I think more we have too to, much, yeah. We have to put everything into it, yeah. Yeah. Because if we don't put all Because we want to get in, everybody using yeah, it. Because yeah, yeah. in New Zealand... Yes. There's only so many people, that's so right. you can put everything in. So the goal is to get everyone, because it's yeah. only four million. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what kind of we learn, is like, we're talking to our friends, but actually... We're talking to all the people we know here, but so, getting ideas. So being very specific and yeah. very the best in that one thing, right, absolutely, is absolutely fine. Yeah. So that that's kind of my observation at the moment. I'm, I find it quite interesting these new uh, incubators that have kind of popped up. So like Lightning Lab, pretty cool. A little bit trying to go for the the very cool hip startup angle oh, yeah. uh, in their messaging, which I don't like so much. I'm sure that. Some listeners would have seen the uh, fight between Dave Mos Moskovitz and Rowan oh, yeah. Simpson recently on oh, Twitter about. We talked about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I lean towards Rowan, just so you know. Oh yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just to be clear. Yes. Uh, but yeah, it's it's more about being real with people and being like, hey, actually, startups are really like fucking hard. Yeah. Excuse my French. That's uh, right. We love French. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's it's really hard. It's not it's not all roses. You some days you're sitting there and you're thinking, well, who's going to buy this thing? Yes. Um, and they like to give off the image that it's a lot easier than it seems. Uh, <laughs> so I think that New Zealand also gives them a lot of potential to succeed as well, though, because it's a lot easier to make a company here. Because if I mean, what's the worst that happens if you fail in New Zealand? It's go to another one. Go somewhere else. It's not so bad. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. Like, uh, I mean, the government will help you if you're really in a really horrible position. 
Yeah, uh, as opposed to in the US where you'd probably be homeless if yes. your startup went under. So it's, it's quite an interesting contrast. Mm. Um, but then again, you have the problem that uh, to get capital here, it's really difficult as well. Mm-hmm. You're probably going to have to give away a lot of yourself mm. unless you go to somebody else. Mm. So this, there's a lot of different parallels to that. It's a hard question to answer. I think we're doing a lot of things right. I think there's a long way to go. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think in Wellington in particular, though, over the last year, it's been ridiculous. Like, there's been heaps popping up that I've never heard of all of a sudden. Yeah. Compared to before, it was like zero on Trade Me and Intergen and, you know, all those big kind of names. Wave Adapt. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so it's good. <laughs> You're laughing, right? You. Because <laughs> there's three of you. Yeah. <laughs> five. Oh, it's a five. Nine at one point. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I have nine too. That's right. We wouldn't let them talk to you. <laughs> the, um... <laughs> There were interns on the, on the help desk. We, we were into that. Ah, uh, <laughs> 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 okay, different front. Oh, there, there you go. go. Oh, yeah. So that's uh, another training school. <laughs> yeah. Front, yeah. Well, it, it's interesting to talk about that. We I use the word ecosystem. Mm. The, the big boys can generate that ecosystem, mm. and just by being who they are, and people people leave like yeah, you know, naturally. Owens <laughs> left. You just leave because you know that's what you do. Yeah. But mm. as long as you can keep them in that geographical area yep. and, and New Zealand I games then they will generate more and more and mm. away we go I think you're right that in the last year or so, two that I'll say treadmill's wrong way that cycle yep. has started to happen of the big boys uh, losing some people yep. and they're starting to generate yep. stuff and in Auckland as well specifically I've noticed that a lot of smaller startups Mm. It's possibly where Wellington, I would have classified Wellington to be probably mm. five years ago. Yeah. That's what's happening in um, Auckland. It's yeah. happening at a greater pace and a bigger volume. Mm. Uh, yeah, the country yeah. gives it. So, of course, it would be. Yeah. Um, that'll be fascinating to see where that's in two years. I mean, all it takes is a zero to happen in Auckland and that will yeah, be absolutely. a match to that liquid. And, and, and we're all looking at Vend to be that person. Yeah, that's absolutely. That, that and that's, and that's the thing. I mean, there's. You're almost spoiled for choice looking for startups to work for in New Zealand. Mm. I mean, it's hard to say some of them are startups anymore. Um, but then again, you have, yeah, you have the problem that those big companies, the big startups, are stealing all the talent for themselves. Well, there is so. that, yes. <laughs> it's like, oh, well, really? Well, gener- generating demand. Yes, true. Well, that afford to do That's the whole great being process, in so. demand. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's not so great for anybody else, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the issue there is the what have kids been taught, mm. and how quickly can they mm. be useful to a company? Yeah, it's. I think that universities here struggle a little bit with computing. Like, uh, yes. Waltech was an interesting one because it was it was all right. It was pretty good, mm. uh, but they weren't up with the times. Mm. Like, it wasn't. It wasn't. Like we learned freaking Visual Basic in 2009. Like I wow. know people that learned that in 1999. Like, yes. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's this, Raja putting a hand up. Yeah, yeah, that's what we did. Yeah. yeah. And so oh, why great. can't they update it and say, oh, we're going to teach these guys Ruby on Rails? Yeah. It's, it's the new thing to do. Yes. You know, like that kind of thing. So mm. I'm not sure. It's it's an interesting. They tend to experience. move move very slowly. They they tend to be, and it's not five years behind. That's and that's yeah, it's it's worse. <laughs> it's worse. <laughs> I, I no my, no I agree. My favorite my favorite uh, favoritist. That's not a word. <laughs> my favorite lecturer was a, a guy who taught us um, C plus plus in uh, on a OHP projector. He actually wrote it all down. He he compiled it in his head. Uh, and to take the test, you actually wrote it all down and you <laughs> filed it in your head. And I'm, I'm, I, I remember sitting there thinking, this is the most ridiculous thing I've ever <laughs> Nothing happens when you hit run. Nothing happens. <laughs> and if you think about the younger people coming into these universities these days, they've probably had a little bit of exposure to coding, even just a little bit on yep. the side. So coming into that environment, they're just like, this is boring. Yeah. Because right. you're looking at this thing and you're like, well, this isn't a screen. <laughs> I can do this at home. Yeah, I'm not going to run. But I home. wouldn't do this at home. I yeah. use a screen. I use a computer. It does yeah. it for me. That's right. Um, and so, uh, so the the other universities have a similar problem. So Vic, um, Vic has mostly Java students because that's what they choose to do. Uh, Massey down here didn't even do a comp sci paper when I was 
looking. I actually really wanted to go to Massey, and they discontinued it because apparently there weren't enough in- wasn't enough interest. And I was like, "Well, what?" No, so, that could be true. The demand in the supply, well, yeah, demand for something doesn't necessarily mean that everyone rushes towards it. Right, but it makes it it makes it really interesting when you uh, look at it from a hiring perspective mm-hmm. for companies. For Zero, for example, uh, we went through the Summer of Tech program where they yeah. try to hire interns, and you're like. You ask some of these guys at this thing, and you're like, "Oh, uh, wh- what languages have you played with? Like, what have you have you have you played with anything at home?" And they're like, "Oh, I learned Java at uni." And I'm like, "Okay, have you heard of anything else?" Oh no, I've never heard of anything else. Wow, what are you doing? Yeah, <laughs> they're getting better. So I've heard that Python is in there now, which is kind of better. And they're adding other stuff, but it's an interesting. It is. Isn't it? It's two part. It's two there. If you're going to be in an industry. Love they it. teach them how to think. Love it. Yeah. Otherwise, why do it? Yeah. And, but also, they need to expo- be exposed to. Yeah. Because you don't know what you don't know. I can I can see the logic for going for something like Java or C++ because yeah. you actually do learn the fundamentals. Mm. But why can't they teach them in second or third year a Ruby on Rails course mm. or .NET? I know that's a resource. <laughs> is an issue for that yeah. tertiary stuff. Though. Oh, we yeah. had the same problem. I was learning stuff like the Photoshops and things like that. And it was the year, three or four years behind the guys mm. in the industry learning, all that kind of stuff. They didn't teach you about talking to clients. Right. All those sorts of things. Those are the things they didn't really thought, think that they needed to teach them. Oh, you learn that when you get out on the job. Yeah, Which absolutely. is when, when, from the other point of view, you're on the job, looking to hire. Oh, you've only learned this, and you've learned that for six mm. weeks, yep. and that for another six weeks, and that, and that's it. Yeah. yeah. Well, cool, and then there's another 500 people just like that. Yeah. So, well, what's the point? Yeah. Exactly. Well, I suppose that's the fade in. That's the beautiful part of a fade in, which is not what's happening generally. And you can say this for any industry, I yeah, imagine. Yeah. Where, which is, you know, you get taught something and then it stops because you do your finals, you get a funny hat, you walk down the street, you throw it in the air, yep. and that's it. They then will see well, you, you're, see you then again. You're like, okay, we'll see you. Now I have to get a job. And then yeah. you have to go and get a job, and it's a massive wall, and you stop. As yeah. opposed to you fade from university right. into. And I suppose Summer Tech well, is actually a classic well, example yeah, of actually being that fake. It's fantastic for that. That's yeah. exactly what happened for me is I actually dropped uni full time because I was like, I want a job, this pays money. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I actually have money. Yes. Uh, and I did the uni thing part time. Why would I do it not part time when I actually am learning things? Yeah. Uh, and that's I think that's important. A summer of Tech is amazing for that. Like, mm. I can't believe... Though, I mean... The students that get to do that are very lucky in that regard because that didn't exist when I was studying. Like, yeah. There was no all-around uh, experience program, um, and I mean, zero and trade me and all that are very generous in that yes. regard as well. They hired five to ten graduates last year, I think, yeah. for that. So, and, and to be fair, I mean, and we we talk about startups and even the, not the startups, the zeros. Mm. You know, I don't know, the, the biggest startups, the biggest survivors. When will they stop be called a startup? <laughs> and yeah. well, in the fronds, um, and yeah. also, but you know, Kiwi Bank and a lot of the government agencies yeah. we're in one, they are now getting a pad off and yeah. much more active in the, in the summer attack. And it's gone to Auckland now as well, which is yeah, a fantastic thing. It's a pilot this year, I understand. But. Oh, right, yes, that is new, I remember. Yes. Yes. It's the first time they've been. They've been asked a lot of times and they've gone, we live in Wellington, why would yeah. we do that? <laughs> but they're now doing a pilot in Auckland, yep. which I think will be. Fantastic for mainly, I believe, it would be fantastic for students. And going back to what I said before, where I think it, you know a Venn becomes massive mm. potentially, or it could be anybody else. Who knows? Then they're going to start crying right. out for yeah these absolutely. skills. And then it's if you summer tech guy, difficult to find because people naturally gravitate to oh San Francisco. Mm. That's where all the startups are. Mm. It's actually, it, I mean, there's a lot of startups there, but it's not that. Cool. It's it's a little bit. It's a little bit wanky. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, everybody has oh, their free... Oh, and Hamiltonians like... listening to this thing in the air. We went to... Um, I was just visiting uh, there just for our holiday, and we went to see Yammer headquarters just to see what it's like. And they're a Microsoft company now, yeah. so they're kind mm-hmm. of a startup, kind of not. Yes. You know, they're in that kind of weird moment. Um, but uh, we were getting a tour, and I'm like... He's like, oh, everything in the cafeteria is free. Why don't you take something? And I'm like, what do you mean? And you walk in there, and it's just lined with these fridges. Every drink you can imagine, like I've, every drink you can imagine in a supermarket is there free. Mm-hmm. You just walk in and take it. And they're like, he was saying, if you don't offer that, 
people might not work for you. It's wow. as simple as that. And so everybody's doing all these things. Oh, you get free gym access. You get free this, free that. And that becomes company culture. When right. And folks, it's good because we yeah. don't have that here yet, which I like. Like, okay, we have slides. We have slides. But, uh, upgrading much slides. To, much to Rod's uh, <laughs> disgust. He doesn't have a slide When it becomes yet. a water slide, then you wonder what the hell's going on. <laughs> well, then it'll be the battle of the slides. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, do you not have so, a water slide? Yeah, yeah. with, with Coke <laughs> going down. No, you don't have it. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's an interesting problem. So I like that we don't have that yes. here yet. People are a lot more humble yeah. to some extent about that's good. Or real even. Yeah. As in it doesn't really matter, it's right, I'm gonna get a, Yeah, absolutely. I'll just pop down the road and yeah. buy a go I'll be fine. Yeah, exactly. I'll so, survive. I think we the don't need that stuff's stuff. more important than hey I get cool stuff at work. Yeah. I can go in and out when I like, that kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Work with a team, work stuff, with a team right? that's real, they don't yeah. mind if it's not more about, it's less about having bums on seats for 40 hours than it is doing the work. <laughs> Getting the outcomes. Um, yeah. So that's, that's quite cool. Where can we find you? Yep. Before uh, we do that, actually, before we do that, can you give us a lowdown on Hoist and yep. what it does? So, uh, we do a lot of things. No, uh, <laughs> so we niche, actually, go niche. Yeah, we actually, so we literally just shared on late last week our kind of new strategy. Uh, and it's funny, we talked about if this and that, because it's kind of like that, but for developers. So mm. what we're going after is these, uh, on the internet at the moment, it's quite hard to hook up your app to somebody else's app in a really deep way and then build your app off the bottom of that. So, like, say you want to get data from zero... Yep. and you want it to be piped into your application whenever something happens, but you want to run custom code to clean up what you're, what they're giving you and run some tasks and all that kind of stuff. Yep. You couldn't do that with if this and that. It's just plug it into there and yes. put it there. So what we're doing is we're going to make it really easy to get connected to an API. So uh, remove the complicated authentication stuff that developers go through, one line of code kind of thing. Yep. Uh, and then we're going to go and... Uh, Make it so that you can connect to the Zero API, run a bit of code in between their API and your API that manages your calls, queuing, and all that kind of stuff, so you don't have to develop a system for that. Yeah. Uh, and then you can run code whenever an event is fired. So, say, for example, again, a new invoice in Zero happens. We would run your code when that happens, and then plop it into your app. Mm -hmm. So the idea is that we're the integration layer with. Other other companies. That's cool. Um, so it's like a if this and that or Zapier for integrations that actually want to do stuff when something happens. Deep in, um, deep 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 in. Yes. So that's the kind of new angle, and that's so that's our. We have two products now. So that's Hoist Connect, which is the connecting to cloud APIs yep. easier. So we want to make the whole API development process easier. Is yep. pretty much the easiest way to explain it. Yeah. And then we've also got our previous product, which will still live on as Hoist Foundation, which is a um, platform as a service. Uh, database layer, user authentication layer, that kind of thing. Yeah. So yeah, we're doing this new thing. Awesome. It looks much better. That's very cool. Yeah. Connecting the services. Yeah. Well, it's a big space. I mean, you if, you, if so you look at all it. the yeah. APIs, yeah. nobody's really nah. meshing it yet. Yeah. So we'll see. Bridging. <laughs> Bridging. We talked about that wave for a long time. It's the next thing that people are going to come to that's going to see their the opportunity is mm. bridging yeah. between all these places. Yeah, absolutely. They're, they're all islands of data. Yeah. But what if you wanted to make an, a zero app that tweets your invoices, for example, yes. uh, but only bits of your invoice? Mm. So we could do that. We could clean up the data yeah. and all that kind of thing. So, so currently, obviously, his, history means that zero is the one you know the deepest and the most. Probably everything yes. and everything else at the moment. Is yeah, uh, we're looking at launch partners. We don't we don't know yet. Okay. Uh, so, we, so we only announced it on Friday, okay. um, but it's kind of something we're building at the moment. Cool. So you can play with an early version of zeros. Yeah, thing there, um, and there's a couple of other ones like um, Facebook and uh, what was something else I can't remember. But so we'll add them more over time. But the idea is to go for depth yes. as opposed to just like here's three things you can do with this API. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah now that's awesome. Yeah. Um, and so developers will be able to find that at hoistapps.com. There we go. <laughs> and where will they find you? Oh, yeah. uh, so I'm in lots of places. Uh, so the best place is at ow on Twitter. The shortest username you'll probably follow. <laughs> yeah. um, We're going to ask that story by the way in a minute. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Owens.co.nz. Uh, o W E N E D.co.nz. Oh, yeah. Yep. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, yeah. mate, thank you so much. This has been great. Thank it's you. been yeah. fantastic. Appreciate the time. You didn't talk about your newsletter. Oh, I didn't. Come on. I run a super awesome newsletter. No, um, <laughs> yes. Just it real is. quick. It is really yeah. good. Uh, thank you. Uh, I came up with the idea to run a, a kind of 
tech newsletter aimed at people who aren't in tech, I guess, was kind of the angle. Is a lot of the stuff that we talk about on blogs and all this different stuff, the next web and the verge is like assuming that the audience has some degree of mm. knowledge about whatever mm. we're talking about. But I guess I came up with the idea of uh, having a tech newsletter for people who aren't in tech. Uh, I wanted to make it so that they could not have to work to find the information, like not have to look for it online, like mm. where, do you, where do I go, there's so much clickbait, right, right, right. Uh, didn't want a particular bias or anything. I just wanted to have something that's really clean. It's like these are the top six or twenty. I don't know how many stories there are every week. Uh, stories from this week. Here's some really cool stuff I saw online. Here's some funny tweets I saw in my feed. That kind of thing. And I just send it out on a weekly basis just to. So who's it aimed at? Because I find it fascinating. Yeah, but I work in tech. Is yeah, it? So, so it's, it's not it's, really aimed at me. Or no, it is aimed at you. It's aimed at people who aren't sitting on the RSS feeds all day like I am okay. I guess is the argument like because yeah, if, I, if you were if you were tech, yeah or... it's still like if you were in tech that's fine it's, it's, it's aimed at a consumer it's aimed at somebody who works in tech they're just not sitting on the verge looking yes. at news or they're not up with the play all yep. day uh, so it's kind of the roundup of the best of this week perfect uh, all that different stuff you can also find that on my Twitter it's right there I say, how, how do people join up? Because I would recommend they do, because it is yeah, an it's, excellent, excellent. It's user. fun to write it. I like it's You know, it's interesting being able to send an email to people because cool. it's quite personal. Yes. So, so where, where, how? How do they uh, find it? Twitter is the easiest way, probably. So if you go at OW, it's just in my bio. Oh, there, okay. So, so it's a link in your about you. Type yeah, yeah. Explaining the URL is impossible, so <laughs> I won't enough. even attempt it. Uh, if, so yeah, on Twitter. If in doubt, go to Twitter and uh, find out. Thank you so much, Owen. Thank you. Fascinating. That was a fun interview. We even had a sneak peek at his freebie smartwatch he got from Google I.O., which didn't actually perform exactly as we expected. <laughs> it didn't do it. Be sure to check out his weekly newsletter, though. You can find it on his site via owen.co.nz. Excellent. Quick call to action this week. It's all to the men out there. Look hard and look long about how you view your female team members and others in the tech world. And to be fair, the only way to do this is actually go and talk to some females who work in tech and find out what it's like for them. So your mission this week is to do that. To understand the female psyche within the tech world. Yes. Interesting. Special shout-outs this week to uh, Nick, who is Nick's on Twitter, N-I-K-Z, and Jamie Wilson, who is at underscore Jamie Wilson with one L on Twitter, for the feedback on the show this week. Feedback's always encouraged and welcome. Absolutely. Thank you very much, guys. And next week, we're going to have Phil Wheeler and Claire Curran talking about the Dunedin ICT tech scene. Now, Claire isn't going to be talking about the election or any of that. Mm-hmm. Not on this particular interview. She will be doing that later. And I know we've already cracked into them, haven't we, Raj? Yes, I've cracked into them. I've got. Uh, I've already done Gareth Hughes and went and saw him last week. Excellent. So we're uh, now starting to... I've got a bit of a momentum going now. We have. We're recording our election specials, and they'll be coming out uh, probably the week or so before the election. But this week, next week, sorry, will be Phil and Claire talking about the Dunedin ICT tech scene. It's cracker of an interview. As always, don't take our jibber-jabber as gospel. Get all the links to the stories we reference in our show notes. All the notes are in one place. They're linked from the hashtag me podcast post where, when we go live on Tuesday. Or just simply Google Access Granted Show Notes. And you can look for us on Twitter. I'm at NZ Raj. Mike is at, at Miramar Mike. Use our podcast hashtag Access Granted and email us on accessgranted at hashtag me.co.nz. And for all the other hashtag goodness, such as the Twitter link, Facebook page, news and prizes, and more, go to hashtag me.co.nz. Thanks for your time. See you next Tuesday with the Kiwi Tech News for those who make our computers do what they do. Kakiti and all. See, that, that wasn't that hard, was it? You managed to do it all right? Got a few gaffes. That's all right. <laughs> we're getting there. Episode 13 will rock. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>